Good job, is Hamas a Malik? That's our question today. The world court under the UN, the anti-Semitic body of the UN, the anti-Semitic world court, is taken up a discussion on is does Israel is Israel um, committing genocide because some of our leaders have called them um, called Hamas Amalek, and of course the Torah tells us that we Amalek is to be eradicated, um, and that's what they think. Oh, so we are trying to eradicate Hamas because not just Hamas but Gaza, because um, Prime Minister said, "Remember what Amalek did to you." So is Hamas a Malik? So uh, let's look historically. We're told as follows. There are many laws that the Torah gives us about different nations. There's, for example, Amon and Moab, that, you're not, that, that converts from Amon and Moab cannot become part of the Jewish people. Um, there's Edomites and, and Egyptians that have, after three generations, they can become part of the Jewish people. So there are certain nations that had a place, geographical place, where that nation was. The issue is, however, about 2,500 years ago, um, Sancheriv, king of Assyria, he came up and he took over the civilized world and he exiled nations from where they were to other places in the world. And he did so to everyone. He moved people around to strengthen his control. He took the 10 tribes of Israel and exiled them somewhere we don't even know where they are. Um, the only one he couldn't get to was Judea with tremendous miracles. That's for another time. So because of that, no nation can be said, oh, they're this nation. You can't point to the people who live in geographical location where Moab and Edom were, or Egypt, or Amalek, and say, this is Amalek, or this is Moab, because Sancherv had already moved them somewhere else, and there's other people living here. So we don't have the technical, technical um, perspective of saying that these people are Amalek, Amalek, Amalekites or Moabites, etc. Besides the fact that when the Torah tells us that we have to get rid of Amalek, it gives us a condition. It says, It'll be when Hashem will... Um, give you respite from all your enemies around you. We would have no other enemies. Then the task is to eradicate Amalek. But unfortunately, we have enemies. So the, the mitzvah of eradicating Amalek practically will only apply once Mashiach comes. We won't have nothing with any other enemies. We'll be able to point out who they are, and Mashiach will have to then deal with that. But right now, that is not on the, that's not on the table. But there's nevertheless something to learn from the comparison with Hamas and Amalek, and that is the following. Or the, um, the, the, the question you ask in this portion is, why the distinction and difference between treat, the treatment of Egypt and Amalek? Egypt, in the beginning of the portion we read, of course, Egypt chasing after us, and Hashem uh, cross, um, splits the sea, Egyptians get drowned in the sea, and after that, we forget about them. They're beyond us. We don't worry about them. As a matter of fact, not only that, the Torah tells us you're not all hate an Egyptian. Why? Because you found refuge in their land. When Jacob and his sons were in, were, in a, were, were in famine, they came into Egypt, and Egypt gave them the land of Goshen, the best of their land, and we had a place to sojourn and live. The 17 best years of Yaakov's life were in Egypt. As long as one of the tribes were alive, we were, we were, there was no persecution of the Jewish people in Egypt. And that meant some 90 years, um, 90 odd years. The real bad affliction and, and, and uh, suffering that we had in Egypt were really about 87 years since the birth of Miriam. So the, um, the, the, uh, hence the Torah says that even though they were the worst, um, you know, our persecution on Egypt was like under Hitler. Nevertheless, because at a time we we had a place of refuge in Egypt, we cannot hate them. Whereas an Amalek, who started up with us, yes, we were traveling through the desert, going on to receive the Torah, Amalek comes and starts fighting with us. 
and uh, hurt some of uh, the uh, the Jewish people who are on the periphery. And then we uh, went to war again them, against them and beat them. And Hashem says, I'm going to destroy Amalek. And later on, in the 40 years later, he says to the Jewish people, remember what they did to you? You have to destroy them. You have to remember. You should never forget. You have to hate them. Why the distinction of the hatred for Amalek versus how we meant to treat an Egyptian who, who did way, way worse than Amalek to us? So the answer basically is that the distinction between Amalek and Egypt is that Egypt were afraid of us for, so to speak, what you could argue is logical reason. They were afraid that we would take over Egypt. We had we were multiplying with so many, in such great numbers, and they were afraid that um, we would become a Trojan horse, a fifth column within Egypt. So that was their logic behind it. Amalek had no reason no logical reason to hate the Jewish people and to come and fight us. The only reason they did it is because, like like their their descendant, Haman, is called Ish Tsar. The Midian are called Tsarim. What's Tsar and Tsarim means? Narrow. They felt, they feel that they are less because of us. They feel less about themselves because of us. They cannot handle us because they cannot uh, feel good about themselves because of the Jewish people because of our success, because of our religion, because maybe they see themselves as a, a, a weak copy of our religion and therefore they feel less than and because of that they hate us. And what that tells us, the conception that gives us is there's nothing we could do other than not to be for them not to hate us. And so therefore the Torah gives us a guidance here, not in terms of genocide, but in terms of a hatred that cannot be healed. In the West, we have a conception. Every hatred, every everything must be because of a fight. And if there's a fight, we could solve the fight by you getting part and you getting part. Just make them a state, then everything will be okay. What a ridiculous idea for many on a number of levels. First of all, um, to give them a, a state means giving them a place where they could have uh, an airport, uh, a port, um, make tunnels, and do October 7th with impunity again and again. It's, it would, it's mind-boggling to talk in, those, in, in, in that direction. It's unbelievably mind-boggling. And besides that, it would give them a reward. Oh, you do terror, you get a state. Wonderful. You know what's going to happen? This kind of attacks would happen in the West and everywhere else because they see reward. The terror is worth it. But going back, that it's just simply to what we were saying it's not going to help it's not going to help because the hatred is not going to be solved by giving them anything because the only thing that can help is us not being and that's not an option and that's what we see with who Amalek was and who Hamas is because of that no technically we don't have the, the law of eradication of men women and children however we have to be on guard and know that these are enemies and they're always going to be our enemies. And the only way to deal with them is to secure ourselves in the fullest possible way. Get rid of all their fighters. Get rid of all those, eradicate all those who are there to destroy us and be in control of the area to the extent that no new people can come and want to destroy us. It's mind-boggling. Even, so to speak, in Jordan, they have just opened a eatery called October 7th. That's in officially a country that's made peace with us. Are celebrating the massacre of October 7th. The hatred is there. Anything they've done with us is all about what benefit they're going to get at the moment. And as soon as it's not beneficial to them, you could be sure that all peace treaties will be out the window, especially with Jordan and Egypt, because those weren't peace for peace. Those were a land for peace. They got their land, and when it suits them, when they're strong enough, as we see, the fact is Egypt allowed all these, all the, uh, all the um, ammunition to come into Gaza, all the fighters to go in and out from through Egypt to Iran and so on. That came through Egypt. So our lesson about the comparison of Hamas and Amalek is that we always have to be on guard. We can never let down our guard. We can never take a risk that will en enable them to do an October 7th again. Um, and we have to know 
that the, 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 this has to be something that we remember all the time. We cannot lose this. Remember what they did and retain the hatred because only then will we retain our, our, will we retain our strong posture to make sure that we guide ourselves that this can never happen again. Good job.